Guais has a new apple sorter that detects both internal and external defects, but such sophisticated technology requires a good deal of machine learning. Today was the first day they sent a full bin of apples through it to begin that training process. The Spectrum takes about 300 pictures of each apple from which it builds a 3D model of the apple to evaluate color, external defects, and bruising. Then the Inspectra 2 uses a near-infrared spectrometer to assess bricks, sugar level that is, and identify internal defects. This is the first Inspectra 2 unit with the latest version of the technology to be shipped outside of New Zealand. Why would a family farm like Gly's want to invest in such a fancy machine? One word, Honeycrisp. People love Honeycrisp, but it is susceptible to internal browning, which is invisible to human eyes without cutting the apple open. No consumer wants to bite into an apple and find brown splotches. So it's a big investment, but my father and brother realized if they're going to continue to grow and sell Honeycrisp apples, they need this technology. Mark Seeley, the manager of the apple grader at Gly's, told me he was both excited about this maiden run and nervous because he realized that as pioneers they will have to work out all the kinks. As with any new technology, things don't always go according to plan. First, Barb noticed the apples were jamming up as they entered the washer. When she alerted Mark, he found the apple rollers were not moving. Once he got them working properly, the apples proceeded through the washer and on to the waxer. Incidentally, Barb told me she used to ride the bus to school with my father when they were children. She's now starting her fourth season working the apple grader at Gly's, but was worried that with the new grader they would not have a job for her this year. However, they assured her that they really need the help of experienced apple graders like her. She was even happier to learn that the new apple sorter will clean its own belts, freeing the packing crew from that dreaded task. As the apples began to emerge from the waxer, Andy discovered they were getting far too much wax because some of the rinse nozzles were clogged, so those apples had to be sent back to be rewashed. When the apples finally began to enter the spectrum, they found that the cameras were offline and had to shut the grater down again. The company rep had to call the IT folks at HQ to get help getting the cameras back online. These first trial apples help teach the sorter to distinguish between good and bad apples. For internal defects, Gly's must run the so-called seed apples through the machine twice and then cut each apple in half and manually grade it on a five-point scale where one is excellent and five is a rotten apple. Those data are then sent back to Compaq in New Zealand where they will optimize the algorithm to detect internal defects. They must repeat that process for each of the more than 20 varieties of apples grown by Glies. I was 96% sure that that was a puncture. But it's the same as this that it's saying it's 78% sure it's a calyx. It's still not quite convinced whether it's a puncture or calyx because it looks almost the same to it. This is the 45 that would be on this side looking at this side of the apple. So based on these, I'm saying that is the calyx, and it's saying it's a puncture. So I click on my calyx, and I highlight those, and that's a calyx. You're correcting the machine. Yeah, yep. and then you push learn. When we looked at the sorting results, Mark noticed the Spectrum classified more than 40% of these Paula Red apples as extra fancy, and another 12% as fancy, with less than 50% relegated to utility or juice grade. Yet the sorter categorized only 12% as extra fancy and another 2% as fancy, with 80% of the apples judged to be juice or utility. Among the apples that were bagged, Mark and Kendra found only one bad apple, but when they looked in the utility juice bin, they found lots of fancy apples. Sensitivity was high, the machine was not overlooking many of the bad apples, but specificity was low, the sorter was falsely identifying lots of good apples as subpar. My dad expected this maiden run to take a couple hours. I had to leave after three hours, but I understand the rep from Compact was there more than ten hours that day. He finally straightened out the communication problems between the sorter and the spectrum. Nonetheless, the machine still has some learning to do. Let's hope it learns quickly because the Honeycrisp are likely to be ready in just a few weeks around mid-September.